Hey, it's Toby here to talk about some technology. Uh, we are still working with, you guessed it, PLC Next and Phoenix Contact. So um, what I did is an example for the PID loop. And what I've got going on here is a set point, which is here, but it's graphed down here. And then this is the actual process variable coming in. Um, and this is the process variable change when you make a change and it catches the set point. So like I can add some disturbance and we will see it bring it back down. And the reason that is, is because I have it attached to the, uh, the pot on the PLC Next technology kit. Um, so I've got it with that, and then I have it, the, the output from the PID loops back in. Um, so I can add like noise um, or cause an upset, and you can see how it comes back down. Or um, like we can reduce it again or try to come back up. So, or I can change the set point as well to get it to change. So with that in mind, it's just strictly, you know, just to, just to see how the function block works. Um, as you can see, the response time is not extremely fast. So I equated it to like, like a flow or, you know, some kind of pressure volume that you might, you know, just simulating that. So, um, anyway. So what I did, oh, here's the other thing. I I put this in node red instead of doing it on the on the PLC next HMI because the PLC next HMI graph requires that you do data logging, um, and I haven't got that far along yet, so. Um, Anyway, it was just easier to pop it in the node red. Um, and you can see the, you know, like some of the variability there as it's going back onto the set point. So just to show you that, that I'm not making it up, um, this is the PID function block. This is in the, in the, typical library so you can just add I don't know why it's taking me to instance oh because I'm running so I can't I can't add it right now I mean I could just show you how to add it you just right click and add it um, anyway and I have an input to start it after the fact because I kept error in it out if it started automatically um, when the PLC booted um, the other thing is KP has to be negative. And I have this like at one second and I'm cycling the, the whole PID process like every four seconds. So I'm not doing anything outrageous. Um, obviously we're just checking out the functionality of this, of this block. So there's no you know, fancy tuning going on. Um, what I did to loop it back is I've got a new process variable that I'm putting back into process variable. And within that, I've got the process variable and the PID output. So the PID output is like plus or minus and, and then it makes the change. And so this, this right here is me simulating that the physical response happened and chose to follow the PID. So just to give you an idea, or just to show how it works, um, I mean, you can see it tooling, around, tooling along right now, around the 4,000 mark. I have all these variables in the watch, and so I can plug in 12,000 and Go ahead and overwrite it, and then you're going to see it shoot to the moon. The set point is in blue. 
the yellow is the process variable so you can see that it's changing um, it's not doing anything dramatic or terribly dramatic and you know it's going to meet set point here so and a little bit of overshoot but um, shouldn't be too bad if it ever makes it it's going 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 we're still going drink some coffee We're thinking about hitting this up point. Maybe. It's a very slow <laughs> loop. Anyway, so to get this to go, so that you can see it on Node Red, um, and we'll, we'll just review that. The uh, these variables. As you can see, I got all these locals, yeah. And in order for the locals to show up, um, you have to tick the HMRs, and that's what you got here. And then, if you got something that you want to show up that's not a local, yeah, like the analog input, you know, that kind of thing, then just a review, you stick it back over here in the HMI, HMI server, so. There you can see my PID output is not um, it's not exactly what you would think it would be, but anyway, it works kind of odd, I think, based on it being looped back, so it still does it. And if I monitor, then you can see it. See everybody doing their thing. And you can see my the process variable at that point, um, and then also because I can, I'm physically changing this, yeah, the PID output is kind of like the difference is more than. But if I change the pot back closer to zero, then it makes the difference. The PID output compensates. Um, anyway, just something to think about with PLC Next. Um, they also have, let's see, let's, let's pop offline. And insert element, and we'll just do All right, insert name object, let's do PID. They also have a PID L time. And I'm not sure exactly what the differences are. Um, again, that is where you would go back over here to PLC next help function. Um, and this is also where you find the information that you need for, you know, like this, this method is recommended only for slow controlling with greater time intervals. So, um, I can't think of a really fast PID loop right now, but I mean, like if you had to rely on milliseconds, I don't know that this would work out for you, but if you're just opening and closing the valve based on flow, um, I don't think it's a problem. Um, temperature control might be, I don't know. You could probably do it. So it just depends on your tuning and what you're working with. The, um, and I'm not sure what the time difference is, except they're allowing you to, what does the L time mean? Because they have the L time on several things, and I can't remember what it does, but they're allowing you to add like a timer with it also. So, anyway, PLC Next Engineer, check it out, have fun with it, Phoenix Contact.